So this is part two of the volleys, the Spanish way show. We lost our power in the last show. Like all our power went out at our house. So we're going to fo follow up on the first part of the show and just wrap up and talk a little bit about Jose Higueras and Tony Nadal and their system for teaching the volley in the net game. But at the end of part one, before the power went out, I was discussing how it's very typical in Spanish tennis to emphasize going to the net carefully and cautiously and responsibly. That's a very common word. That, that's a phrase that you hear from Jose Higueras himself a lot, is you go to the net responsibly. So that's different from other countries and other systems where they emphasize aggressiveness, pressuring your opponent by going to the net. If you remember the, like the, the old school Australian game where you, you go forward to the net and apply pressure at all times. This is a very different concept of the net in Spain. In Spain, it's about being cautious, about being careful, about playing uh, the percentages when you go to net and only attacking the net when the advantage is clearly in your favor. So the idea of just going to the net countless times and applying quote-unquote pressure, I think is antithetical to the Spanish approach to building the net game. And in Spain, the focus is more on, okay, I'm going to build the, the point from the back, grind, forehand, backhand, going to work the point, look for our opening. The opening is usually, typically, the forehand. So you're going to look for the big, heavy forehand to move forward behind. So a, a powerful forehand typically is the entry point to the net. And then you're going to rise to the net for a high percentage volley, usually a volley that's higher above your waist, uh, between the hip and shoulder that you can easily put away. Usually the emphasis is on putting the volley away on a short angle. So short, angular, angulado, as they say in Spain, rather than uh, other types of volleys. Now, in, in Spain, they some depending on the, the system, the method, methodology, depending on the coach guru, they might work on different aspects, nuance at the net, reflex, other types of volleys. But in my experience, typical Spanish approach is to train one, I don't want to say universal volley, but it's a simple singles type volley. It follows a big forehand, you move in, the player moves in, and you get a volley between your hip and shoulder that you can simply put away on an angle, short, and it's not much more complicated than that. And I think in many ways in Spain, if you're not getting that volley, and I've written about this in several articles, if you're not getting that put away volley, that finishing volley between the hip and shoulder, you probably did something wrong in terms of structuring the point. So a uh, Spanish coach would probably argue that you don't need that many other volleys for singles. Because if you play the point well, if you structure the point well, if the point is organized and you enter behind the big forehand, you should really be successful with just that simple uh, medium to high volley put away. And that's the one you need to practice the most. And so I think the, uh, the net game and the volley is built in that, that simple manner with the idea in singles of approaching behind such a strong shot that the volley that you receive is not low below the net, it's not stretched wide, it's not too difficult, and it's, a, it's the simple finishing volley that you need to practice the most and that you, will, that you should see when you play matches. Uh, as opposed to some other volley systems, uh, other volley teaching methodologies, where you practice everything. You know, I, I think the Ameri there's a lot of American coaches who do that. Um, a lot of Eastern European coaches sometimes do that. Australia, I mentioned before, where you work everything. You work reflex, you work lots of uh, touch shots and half volleys and countless other types of volleys, like nuance volleys, I call them, or specialty shots. And you, you develop um, 
you know, the, the, the net game is much more robust or robustly taught in those types of systems. In Spain, I think in general, the volley and the net game are, are taught much more simply. And the main focus is on using the big forehand to enter and then finishing very simply. So that doesn't mean there are not some coaches in Spain who maybe work more on nuance. I remember studying with Pato Alvarez in Spain, and he has a lot of exercises that are reflex, that are a lot of randomized, different types of volleys that would serve you better in doubles. And I don't think it's just surprising, as I mentioned earlier in the show, that there are a lot of good doubles players that came out of Pato Alvarez's stable. Pato Alvarez is a very legendary coach in Spain. Uh, and not that many great doubles players coming out of the Bruguera system or Bruguera stable. And I, I think that that tells you something about where the the emphasis of those systems lie, where where they are, what they are highlighting, what they are prioritizing. But in general, just from my travels around the country and visiting many different academies over the years, I've been going to Spain now for 13 years or so, uh, working with different Spanish coaches, studying with different Spanish coaches. In general, the way the Spanish see it is, okay, I'm going to get that short ball. It's probably going to be a forehand because the forehand is the primary weapon. The forehand is the most important shot of the game for someone like Tony Nadal. So I'm going to use my my forehand, my drive, to enter and rise to the net. And I should achieve a simple put-away volley if I hit my drive well. So it's almost a, a, a net game that's linked very closely to the big forehand. And the forehand is what tees up the volley. So in that way, it's a very simple approach. And if you think about it, if you're a singles player or if you're a coach who's primarily developing uh, singles players, you could save a lot of time by just working on the volley in that context. And, and in Spain, they do like to save time. They do like to be very efficient with the way that they train. So this is an example where you could say, well, it's not that robust a system. It's not that, that uh, it's not a very complete volley or net, net game teaching system, but it's simple and effective, brutally effective, because normally you should be entering behind the forehand, the big shot that you shouldn't have to hit difficult volleys. You shouldn't be stretching. You shouldn't be getting volleys at your shoelaces too much, too frequently. And I would argue that if you are getting a lot of those types of volleys, your strategy and your movement, your choice, your decision to go to net is probably not the best that it could be. And I'm sure Spanish coaches would agree. So try to think about the volley and net game. Put, put yourself in Spanish coaches' shoes and think about the net game that way. If I'm getting difficult volleys, low volleys, uh, uh, bo body vol volleys at my body, volleys where I'm stretching, volleys that I'm in trouble a lot. Does it mean that my, and I'm missing them, does it mean that my volley is not good or does it mean that my, my tactics maybe are not that good? My, my decision to go to the net is not that good. And it comes back to the idea of, am I being responsible when I go to net? So I think that's a very important part of the Spanish game, being responsible, making good decisions, and trying to work on that very simple uh, put-away volley rather than over-focusing on too many broad aspects of the net game. Uh, so, Tony Nadal and Jose Higueras. These guys are, I think, the best examples of Spanish coaches who are teaching the modern style in Spain. They they believe in the complete game. They believe still in the, the big forehand, the weapon, but they spend you know a lot of time on serve and return, a lot of time on uh, approach and volley, all court. They, they have a balance of teaching defense and offense, uh, defending taking the ball on the fall and taking the ball on the rise. You know, they they, they preach uh, adjusting your court position and especially improving your court position by playing a little closer to the baseline, which facilitates the, the net game, the, the ability to transition to the net. You know, in the, for example, in the typical classic Bruguera style, you know, the, in the Bruguera system, the players are allowed to hang back deep in the court way behind the baseline and and 
more so than in other systems in Spain. And I think because if you allow that, you're not going to uh, have players who are making a lot of moves to the net because they're too deep in the court. It's, it's too hard to t transition well effectively if you're playing too deep. So part of being able to move to the net and rise to the net is also teaching uh, to squeeze the court, to, to improve your court position, to play a little closer to the baseline, to take the ball a little more on the rise. And so the, the traditional, I would say, classic Spanish game is not built for that because it's typically uh, angling back into the court, playing sometimes six, eight, ten feet behind the baseline, grinding. That's not conducive to a good transition game forward. It's hard to rise to the net from a deep position. It's, it's, it's not going to work. So I think part of of developing the net game in Spain and the, the, what the modern guys are doing, like Higueras and, and Tony Nadal, what you see at the N Nadal Academy now, is, is much more modern approach, complete, all court, taking the ball earlier because that allows the player to finish more easily at the net. I think you see in the Nadal's development in the last 10, 15 years, if you look at his evolution as a player, gives you a good sense of what's happening in Spain, sort of like a microcosm of what's happening in Spain on a, on a larger level. You could extrapolate Nadal's own personal stylistic journey and apply it writ large across the country of Spain. Because if you look at the old videos of Nadal, he played very much more defensively. He played deeper in the court. And if you watch him over the last years or so, recent, more recently, he plays more up. He takes the ball earlier. He goes to net more. He strikes a little earlier. You know, that is something that he's worked on a lot with Tony and the rest of his coaching team. And I just think that is a, a small example of what's happening all across Spain. If you go back 10, 15, 20 years ago, a lot of the Spanish players are more, more conservative, play deeper in the court, hang back, you know, not looking to strike at the net as frequently. And now you see that that is evolving uh, gradually, Nadal being the prime example of that. So that's an example of how Tony Nadal is always innovating, always evolving, always developing. Genius coach who's always learning and trying to get better. And you can see it in, in the way that Rafa Nadal is playing even at the professional tour level. But that's happening at many other levels, including the junior level in Spain and in junior development. Uh, when, you, when coaches see Nadal taking the ball earlier and moving to the net earlier, they start to teach that to the players, uh, the juniors coming up in Spain. I mean, I remember reading Nadal's biography or autobiography, and one, one statement that he made really stuck in my mind uh, from the book regarding the net game. And he said, sometimes... I want to go to the net, but, and I have the opportunity to go to the net, but I don't. I don't go yet. I don't hit a winner yet or, or you know, an aggressive shot to go forward yet. I wait. I'm paraphrasing the book, but he, Nadal would say, said in the book, I, I, wait, I wait a few more uh, uh, rallies to look for an even better shot that will give me a better percentage at the net. So what Nadal is basically saying is... It, Back then, this is probably circa 2010. I don't know when the when his when his autobiography was written. Maybe maybe 10 years back at least. I mean, he's basically admitting that he could have hit a winner and gone to the net, and he would sort of bide his time and wait for an even better opportunity to go for a winner and move forward and rise to the net. And I think that's such a great example of how much even in in Nadal's own game he has changed. Where now. I don't think he would admit that. I think he would say, uh, as soon as I get that first one that I want, I go. And I think that's the big change stylistically in Nadal's game. And, and also, in probably, you know, for sure, in the teaching approach of Tony, because Tony you know, models his teaching on what he's done with, with, with Rafael. Uh, that's just a great example of, of maybe a, a broader evolution in Spain where players are striking a little earlier. And they're not being as patient. You know, I talked about patience in part one of the show. Maybe the the next trend in Spain more and more is is uh, a little less.
patience, a little more aggressiveness, uh, rising to the net on, at the first opportunity, maybe rather than waiting, maybe a little bit less grinding, you know, in terms of the transition. With someone like Jose Higueras, he believes in, for many years now, he's believed in the all-court game, you know, teaching all the skills, especially spending a lot of time on the net game, much more so than I've seen in any system, uh, like any system like, like Luis Bruguera's system. Luis Bruguera's system is heavily baseline oriented. And in fact, an interesting story in juxtaposition is when I talked to Jose, Jose Higueras about the Bruguera style, you know, Jose coached Sergi for one year one year plus or minus some change and Jose told me some stories about it, how it was really hard for him in the dynamic with him and Luis the father Luis is also uh, Sergi's coach so it was it was a difficult uh, relationship that they, they I guess they butted heads a little bit and that Jose said that Sergi could have been a lot better player you know, Sergi topped out at number three in the world and he won he won Roland Garros twice and he was a great Spanish champion, but Jose Higueras always told me that he felt that Sergi could have been a lot better, believe it or not. He felt he could have improved his court position better. He felt that he could have gone forward to the net and he could rise to the net better. He said his volleys were actually very good. He had very good hands that you didn't see that much because of his court position, the way he played. If you look at old tapes of Sergi, you know he he tended to hang he tended to hang back a lot and pummel people with his ground strokes but i think jose intimated that he could have gotten more output out of sergi better results maybe better results on all surfaces as well instead of just being such a clay court beast that he was that he could have gotten a little more out of sergi if uh luis had let him work more on the complete game and maybe taking the ball earlier and, and, and spending more time on the volley. Uh, I just thought that's a very interesting story because it highlights the difference between sort of the classic baseline-oriented system, of the Bruguera system in Spain, that lineage, that, that uh, methodology. In my, in my view, as, as objectively as I can explain it to you guys, it is uh, very, uh, less focused on the volley versus someone like Tony Nadal or Jose Higueras, who are, I think have evolved and are teaching a lot more all-court, a lot more complete game. Uh, their systems, are their, their philosophy is much more complete game oriented. And, and, and Higueras especially um, is someone who spends a lot of time on the volley, just in terms of quantity of training. You know, maybe you can spend 50, 60% of the time uh, with players on the volley, you would never see that in the typical Bruguera style. Or, and most traditional Spanish programs would never spend that much time on the volley. The volley is typically, you know, just just an afterthought, just a small percentage of the weekly training workload. Hey, what's up, uh, guys? I see I got some nice waves here from old friends. And I do apologize for missing you last night. We We lost power. So... Uh, I didn't uh, bail on you guys. We just got disconnected. So we're just finishing up the show. Christian, we're just finishing up the show. Thanks for tuning in again. Appreciate the support. And I thought we'd just, you know, just kind of review the volley. You have some different styles and trends in Spain. You have the, should I call it old school? I'll call it classical. The traditional Spanish approach, which has always been a heck of a lot of baseline work and a little bit of volley. If you go back even a little further, probably you're just going to come uh, to the net. It's the only time you're going to come to the net is uh, when you shake hands. You know, you, people used to make fun of Spanish players back in the day and say, you know, the Spanish players only come to net to shake hands at the end of the match. And that is something that is evolving. I, it's changing because now you have... Well, you always had the system of Pato Alvarez, which was very all-court oriented. So Pato Alvarez was maybe way ahead of his time in terms of spending a good amount of, of the practice on the volley and the transition. But you have many new generation coaches in Spain. You have coaches like uh, you know, Pat, uh, 
Tony Nadal and Jose Higueras and, and the young, younger coaches coming up who all see the game more complete, more all court. They want their players to be complete. They want their players to have excellent volleys and, and transitional skills. And that becomes also more part of their strategy to strike a little earlier rather than than being ultra grinders. You know, you don't see as many Spanish players now who are just, you know, 10 feet behind the baseline, grinding topspin balls, kind of the way Bjorn Borg used to play. That style is is fading a little in Spain. And the emphasis now more and more is being complete, being able to take the ball on the rise. A great example of that is most of the Spanish academies, they train 50% of the time on hard courts. They play on faster courts. They want to be successful on multiple surfaces. Part of that is being more complete. So Jose Higueras gets that. Tony Nadal gets that. I don't know if Luis Bruguera gets that. Luis is a genius. I learned so much from Luis, but I, I, I think he probably could... Uh, get his players a little more uh, taking the ball a little earlier and he could encourage his players to finish more forward. You know, I, I don't know if he would agree. He, he'd probably argue with me about that, but but I, I think that that's definitely uh, the case. Pato Alvarez has always had a strong emphasis on, as, and he's, he's an older coach, very old coach now, always had an emphasis on good volley, good complete all-around game. His system is designed to build, uh, you know, all three zones of the court. The Pato Alvarez system is the three zones: baseline, mid court, net game. So he he's always been that way. So you have these powerful leaders in the coaching world in Spain, and and I think to understand uh, to understand the volley, the Spanish way, you have to understand the individual coaches, the leaders who set the trend, who set the stage. The, the role models for all the other coaches and, and players and and the players themselves too. As as the Spanish players start to go to the net more and demonstrate their complete games as professional Spanish players uh, approach and volley more and strike a little earlier, you'll see that that become part of the teaching system across the country because other coaches and players they they the coaches copy that and the players also roll uh, they model their favorite player on tour nadal coming forward and volleying demonstrating great volleys you know people notice that the spanish coaches notice that spanish kids notice that and they say hey i'm gonna make sure my volleys are good so guys uh, next week we're gonna do another show on the volley and it's going to be a little more technical, so I want to talk about how I, I like to build the volley, how what I see as the, the, the important technical parameters, the uh, what you need to develop a world-class uh, volley from a technical perspective. So this show was sort of an appetizer. This show, episode 48, we, we got to talk about one of my favorite subjects, Spanish tennis and in the context of the volley in the context of Spanish tennis. I hope you got a sort of a sense of the perspective, the philosophy, the principles that that, that the typical Spanish coach uses to develop the volleys uh, when developing the volleys. And and hope you can understand how the way most Spanish coaches see the volley, they see it in the context of baseline play, big forehand, and then the simple volley. Uh, less less so than they don't see it like pressuring they don't see it like i'm going to go as much as i can i'm going to rush and crush i'm going to attack it whenever i can and smother the net and apply pressure that way they don't see the game that way the way they see it is is baseline maybe defending and then attacking attacking usually with the forehand, setting up that simple put-away volley, and they tend to train all the drills that way rather than uh, just attacking. That's a very, just popped in my mind, but very big difference between uh, most Spanish systems. They do a defensive shot before the offensive shot. So that gives you a sense of where the mindset is. There's a defensive shot before the player's allowed to attack and then move to the net. And in most other systems where I've studied, most other countries I've been to studying different academies, how do they do it? How do, how do you normally teach the approach and volley? You give the player a short ball, right? 
they get the attack shot, and then they go to volley. But a lot of the Spanish style is, is always some defense, some consistency first, because that's the priority in Spain. You have to be solid. And then, once you have that, a little defense, a little grinding, now you can come forward. And when you come forward, you set up that simple put-away volley above your waist and between your, you know, between your hip and shoulders. That's the Spanish conceptualization of the volley. So I hope you guys can get uh, some understanding of that. Uh, I tried to describe it as best I could. Uh, it's different than definitely the way some other coaches build the volley. You know, they, they might start players at the net. And they might do everything wham, bam, like one, two shot combinations, uh, short attention span. They tell players to go to net as soon as possible. And maybe another big difference is a lot of coaches will, from other systems, other countries will say, when you go to net, you're on the advantage. It's your advantage. And in Spain, I don't think the coaches would always say that. They say, you, when you go to the net after building and constructing the point well, behind a big shot like a big forehand it's to your advantage but if you don't go to net responsibly i'm sure jose higueras would agree and most spanish coaches would agree if you don't go to net responsibly the net is actually a very dangerous place the net is actually a place where you can lose a lot of points quite quickly you make yourself very vulnerable when you go to net and that and i've written about this in many articles is i think the missing message in the U.S., in, in other countries where I've traveled, other, I've studied with some other great coaches, they don't ever mention that dark side of the net. They always say the net is a good place for you to go. The net is always good because it implies pressure. But pressure, uh, some, pressure doesn't always work nowadays in today's game. You know, guys are passing shot artists, and you can lose a lot of points quickly at the net just as much as you can win them. So... I think that is the missing message that that you can, if you want to take one, if you want to get one takeaway from volleying the Spanish way, it's be responsible and know that the net is not always to your advantage. The net, I, like I tell my students, is like a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways. You go to net, and if you're not responsible when you go to net, you're going to get burned. You're going to lose a lot of points, especially if you play a guy or a girl who's got great passing shots. Imagine playing Nadal or Djokovic. Man, you got to come to net behind something really good. You got to structure that point really well to effectively win at the net. That's why sometimes when a player comes to me and they say, Chris, I don't volley good. I lose a lot of points at the net. Well, most coaches will try to work on their volley, but sometimes I put the player at the net and they volley to me and I say, wow, this kid got very good volleys. And then I know it's not their volleys. It's the way they set up the volley. It's the decision that they made. They weren't responsible. They weren't uh, selective enough with their approach shot. And then that makes their volley much worse. Because if you get an easy volley above your waist, uh, around your shoulder, chest height, you're going to win most of the points at the net. But if you're approaching the wrong way, bad decision... You're going to get lots of passing shots at your feet. You're going to get volleys stretched, volleys uh, that are difficult. And then what happens to your winning percentage at the net? It goes down. It, it maybe drops below 50%. So I think a Spanish coach really wants to see a high percentage success rate at the net. I'm talking 60 70% success rate. And if you look at the stats, look at the analytics for guys like Nadal, and other Spanish players, it, the, the success rate is usually quite high because of the way they structure and, and build their points and the smart decision-making that they make uh, when moving forward, when rising. So, guys, hope you appreciate this insight into the Spanish net game, the Spanish volley, how to do it. And next week, let's go over some of the technical parameters for the volley. You're not going to learn too much technique in Spain, as I've told you. Spain is not known for their technical prowess, their technical detail. So we'll get a little more uh, Israeli or Eastern European here. And, and let's get down to the details of the, of the volley next week. We'll talk maybe a little bit about the grips, about the, you know, what the body positions and the mechanical, biomechanical elements 
That'll be a different type of show. And that'll make a nice two-part, kind of like a two-set CD, uh, you know, CD package here, like a, a two, two-part deal here. A little Spanish philosophy and then next week technique. Guys, was uh, a great pleasure. I am sorry for the power outage. If you were with me last night, please forgive me. Sometimes it happens when you live in the mountains in Vermont. But uh, it was a great show. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. If you're able to come up to train with me, please let me know. Uh, a lot of players coming up for the December holiday uh, to do some serious training. 25 hours a week with Chris. 25 hours, guys. So if you want to come train, but I hope you're ready because that is a lot of hard work with me. Can you survive 25 hours a week with me? That's the question. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Adios.